Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, we are looking at the sampling of an analog signal to, con to extract samples from it to, co to convert it to a digital signal all right. And we have said that uh, the signal can be sampled by multiplying it by an, uh, by an impulse train all right which is termed as ideal sampling all right. So, let us say let us consider our impulse train which is given by g delta t equals summation uh, summation this is your summation n equal to minus infinity uh, that is summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity delta t minus n t s where T s is the sampling interval all right which is basically the time interval between the successive sampling instants ok. Delta is of course, the direct delta function and this is basically uh, we have our sequence of impulses a train of impulses at every multiple of T s. So, we have impulse at T s we have impulse. So, this is our impulse at T s, we have impulse at 2 T s, we have impulse at 3 T s and so on. And of course, we have impulse at 0, we have impulse, we have an impulse at, we have an impulse at minus T s. minus 2 T s etcetera. And now, what we want to do is we want to find the spectrum G delta f that is the spectrum G delta f which is basically your spectrum of G delta t ok. We want to start with that towards eventually find the spectrum of the spectrum of the sampled signal. Now, you will see that this signal if you can if you look at this signal this impulse train correct this impulse train this impulse train you will realize this is a periodic signal. The impulse train is a periodic signal since there is one impulse every T s. So, you have impulse at T s, impulse at uh, 0, impulse at T s, 2 T s, minus T s, minus 2 T s and so on all right. So, this is a periodic signal with period T s ok. So, this is a periodic signal with period equal to T s ok. So, in one period let us say this is basically uh, your x t or your g delta t equals basically delta t 0 less than equal to t less than t s all right. This is the signal and therefore, since this is periodic we can find the Fourier discrete Fourier series representation. Since this is periodic, since this is periodic, one can find the one can find the discrete Fourier series of G delta t ok. So, let us express G delta t. So, G delta t can be expressed as summation well 
k equals minus infinity to infinity c k e to the power of j 2 pi k f s t where f s equals 1 over t s. The sampling frequency is the fundamental frequency, all right. Fundamental frequency is 1 over time period, correct. The fundamental frequency is 1 over the time period, the time period is nothing but the sampling interval, right. Sampling interval that is t s. Therefore, uh, the sampling frequency f s itself is the fundamental frequency, okay. So, the fundamental frequency. frequency equals the equals the sampling frequency all right and further now we have to find this coefficient ck and uh, you can see that this coefficient each ck equals well, 1 over T s, we know the expression for C k 1 over T s integral 0 to T s correct G delta T or we can make it from minus T s by 2. 2 T s by 2 G delta T d T uh, which is equal to 1 over T s minus T s by 2 2 T s by 2 delta T uh, sorry G delta T e to the power of minus J Two pi k f s t e to the power of uh, e to the power of minus j two pi k f s t d t. All right, where we replace g delta t by delta t in that interval minus t s by two to t s by two. Now, the integration with multiplying by delta t is very simple that is when I multiply a function by delta t and integrate that extracts the value of the function at t equal to 0. So, this is simply e to the power of minus j to uh, j 2 pi k f s t evaluated at t equal to 0 that is simply 1 over that is simply 1. So, this quantity is simply 1 over t s into 1. So, 1 over T s. So, each C k has a very simple expression each C k this is the kth coefficient in the discrete Fourier series. kth coefficient in the discrete Fourier series of g delta t that is your uh, that is basically your that is basically your c k. So, we have evaluated each coefficient c k as 1 over t s and therefore, now the discrete Fourier series representation of this impulse train is basically given as I have g delta t equals summation k equals minus infinity to infinity. 1 over T s e to the power of j 2 pi k f s e to the power of j 2 pi k f s t which is also basically you can write it since 1 over T s is common. So, you can take it outside of the summation 1 over T s k equal to minus infinity to infinity e to the power of j 2 pi k f s this is your discrete Fourier series. This is basically your discrete Fourier series. This is basically the discrete Fourier series representation, okay, correct. And now, from this discrete Fourier series representation, we can find the Fourier transform. So, from this 
find the FT or the Fourier transform and that is simple. One can extract the Fourier transform uh, because e to the power of j 2 pi k f s t if you look at e to the power of j 2 pi k f s t e to the power of j that is nothing but an impulse this Fourier transform of this is an impulse at k f s correct Fourier transform is an impulse at k f s. Fourier transform or basically spectrum is an impulse at KFS, which means now the Fourier transform of this is basically G delta T is basically each Fourier transform of each is basically an impulse delta F minus k f s. Therefore, the Fourier transform g delta f which is basically the Fourier transform of g delta t uh, is basically. So, if you look at g delta t and let us say we consider its Fourier transform capital G delta f that is simply summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity uh, 1 over well there is a 1 over T s e each e to the power of j 2 pi f uh, k f T s uh, k f uh, e to the power of j 2 pi k f s t has a spectrum delta f minus k f s okay? and f s remember f s is basically 1 over T s. So, this is basically nothing but 1 over T s summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity delta f minus 1 over T s. Okay? And therefore, you can see something very interesting which is basically if you look at this summation, if you look at this summation. 1 over T s summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity delta f minus 1 over uh, T s. Uh, this is basically uh, this is basically another impulse train. Now, you can see that this except for the scaling factor of 1 over T s, this is basically another impulse train and this is a train of impulses in the frequency domain. So, all right. So, we have come, started with the train of impulse, impulse train in the time domain and what we are seeing is its Fourier transform or spectrum is basically an impulse train in the frequency domain, impulse train in the frequency domain. Is an impulse train in the frequency domain. Further, the spacing between the impulses that is each impulse I am missing a factor of k over here yeah, this is f minus k over T s. So, spacing between impulses equals f s equals 1 over T s. Remember spacing in time equals T s the impulses are spaced at because T s is the sampling interval all right. So, the impulses are spaced T s apart, but in frequency impulses are spaced. So, spacing in frequency equals spacing in frequency equals this equals 1 over T s all right. So, spacing in fact, so as the space, so spacing in time is T s, spacing in frequency is 1 over T s. So, basically as the sampling, uh, as the sampling interval T s increases, the spacing in time increases, 
the spacing in frequency that is 1 over Ts decreases because 1 over Ts is the sampling frequency. As the sampling interval increases, Fs that is the sampling frequency decreases. So, spacing in frequency is the sampling frequency. All right, as sampling time, sampling interval is increasing, the sampling frequency is decreasing, therefore, spacing in the frequency domain is decreasing. And conversely, as the spacing in the uh, and uh, vice versa right as the spacing in the time decreases that is your sampling at finer at a fi at a very fi at finer and finer interval right uh, that is ts is decreasing the sampling interval ts is decreasing which means the sampling increase uh, the sampling frequency fs is increasing the spacing in frequency increases all right so this is spacing in frequency is ts equals 1 over ts equal to fs so you can note that as 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 spacing in time decrease increases spacing in the frequency domain decreases okay as spacing in time increases spacing in frequency domain increases and vice versa as spacing in time decreases As spacing in time decreases, spacing in the frequency that uh, basically uh, increases. All right, so that is basically it means that as your sampling finer and finer in time, that is Ts is decreasing, uh, the spacing in frequency, that is the sampling frequency Fs is increasing. Therefore, the spacing between these successive impulses of the impulse train in the frequency domain is increasing. Now let us look at what is the Fourier transform of the sampled function. All right. So, now we are in a position to look at the Fourier transform of the sampled function. So, we want to look, we have found the Fourier transform of the impulse train. Now, Fourier transform of The Fourier transform of the sampled analog signal, now you can see that will be given as follows. Remember m delta t or sampled analog signal is simply m of t times g delta t. This is your sampled analog signal. This is your sampled signal and m of t is the original analog signal. your original this is your original analog signal and now if i look at the fourier transform of this correct that is very simple m delta f is the fourier transform of m delta t that is the sampled signal this is equal to now you can see M, uh, m t let us say has a Fourier transform m of f and g delta t we know has a Fourier transform g delta f. This will be the convolution between the Fourier transform m delta f uh, m f and g delta f because multiplication in the time domain is convolution in the frequency domain. So, multiplication in time becomes convolution multiplication in time becomes convolution in the frequency domain. Therefore, m delta f that is the spectrum of the sample signal equals m of f convolved with g delta f, g delta f we have seen is 1 over T s 
summation that is 1 over T s summation delta f minus k uh, k f s and 1 over T s is also equal to remember 1 over T s is also equal to f s. So, this is basically your uh, convolution with f s times summation k equals minus infinity to infinity correct k equals minus infinity to infinity uh, f s delta f minus k f s where f s is the sampling frequency and this is equal to well f s summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity m f convolved with delta k f s which is f s now k equal to minus infinity to infinity m f convolved with delta f minus k f s remember this is nothing but m f minus k f s. So, this is m f minus k f s that is your m uh, that is your m delta f m delta f is basically k equal to minus infinity to infinity uh, m, m delta f is f s summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity m f minus uh, m f minus k f s m f minus k f s m f minus k f s that is what you are doing here is something very interesting. Right. First, let me elaborate the property that we have uh, used here again is something that should be very familiar to you that is m f uh, convolved with delta f minus f naught simply, simply shifts m f to f naught. So, m f convolved with each delta f minus k f s simply shifts each m f to k f s and therefore, now what you are doing is you are shifting this spectrum m f to each k f s alright. So, for at each k f s that is k times multiple of the sampling frequency f s right you have a copy alright of this original spectrum m f. So, now you are shifting this spectrum m f to each k f s and you are summing all these copies. So, the spectrum of the sample signal will be the sum of the copies of the original spectrum m f, m f, uh, m f shifted to every multiple of the sampling frequency f s. Okay. So, what you are seeing here is something very interesting what you have is this is the or uh, this is the uh, spectrum of sampled signal equals sum of all copies all copies of the original message spectrum m f shifted to every k f s where k f s remember k f s is k th basically this is the k th multiple of this is the kth multiple of the sampling phrase. So, this is a sum of all copies of the message spectrum shifted to every k f s which is very interesting. So, we have the original spectrum m f now we are shifting this to each k f s right each multiple of the sampling frequency each integer multiple of the sampling frequency f s therefore, you are making an infinite number of copies of the original spectrum m f and then you are adding all these copies. Now, let us see in the frequency domain what the, what uh, this corresponds to. So, you have your original spectrum m f. Okay. So, let us say you have your original spectrum 
this can lead to something very interesting in the frequency domain. You have your original spectrum MF, correct? You have your original spectrum MF, okay? Let us say the maximum frequency is FM between minus FM. So, this is your original message. original message spectrum MF. Now, let us draw here the sampled spectrum. So, we are going to have, well, we are going to have the original message spectrum intact that is going to be intact. So, we are going to have the original message spectrum that is going to be intact and so that is going to be this is going to be MF. In addition at FS, you will have one copy at FS, correct? So, this is the copy at 0. In addition, you will have one copy which is shifted to FS, correct? So, that will be that copy will be. So, this point is your FM. Now, there is a copy at FS. So, this point naturally is F s plus F m and this point is interesting if you look at this, this is F s minus F m. Now, there can potentially be an overlap in this region. These two copies, so this is your M f, this is your M f minus M f. So, there can be there can be an overlap between these two copies. So, M f now if you can see this correspondence is interesting. So, there can be an overlap and the overlap the overlap leads to distortion. So, you have a copy of the original spectrum there is another, you have the original spectrum at 0, there is another copy shifted by F s. When you take the sum, these two copies can overlap and therefore, once you sum, that can lead to distortion, all right. And this can cause distortion of the sample, that is the, sa the spectrum of the sampled signal is not similar to the spect the spectrum of the sampled signal that is m delta t, that is m delta f is not similar to the spectrum m f of the original signal. It is a distortion version of the distorted version of the spectrum of the original signal M f, all right. And when does this arise? This distortion arises if there is an overlap. No, realize that this distortion arises when you can see when will there be an overlap? There will be an overlap when F s minus F m is less than F m. F s minus F m is less than F m, which implies F s is less than twice F m. So, these spectral, the spectral overlap so, this is a very important and very interesting condition. The spectral overlap, right? Spectral overlap between these different copies of the spectrum shifted by the various integer multiples of F s will occur if the sampling frequency F s is less than twice the maximum frequency F m of the original analog signal. All right. And therefore, and this distortion which occurs because of the spectral overlap is termed as aliasing. Okay. So, this distortion. this distortion which occurs because of overlap between copies of spectrum
shifted by multiples of f s is termed as is termed as aliasing. is termed as aliasing, this is termed as aliasing. So, this distortion which occurs because of this overlap, this distortion is termed as aliasing. And aliasing occurs if f s less than twice f m that is aliasing occurs and this is a very important condition aliasing aliasing occurs if f s less than twice f m that is another way of stating this is basically sampling frequency is less than twice the frequency of the your sampling frequency is less than twice the maximum sampling frequency is less than twice the maximum frequency of the signal being sampled that is twice the maximum frequency of your empty. Therefore, to avoid aliasing we need f s greater than a m. Therefore, to avoid aliasing to avoid aliasing or aliasing distortion we need f s greater than or equal to twice f m and this is termed as the this is termed as the Nyquist this is termed as the Nyquist criterion for sampling to avoid aliasing this is termed as the this has many names this is termed as the Nyquist criterion this is termed as the Nyquist criterion or your Nyquist this is termed as a Nyquist criterion or the Nyquist sampling theorem, which basically says that for to avoid aliasing which arises from the overlap of the spectral copies or the shifted spectral copies at the different multiples of the sampling frequency f s, one has to sample at a sampling frequency f s greater than twice f m, where f m is the maximum message frequency. All right, maximum message frequency or fm you can think of it also as the bandwidth of the original signal you have to sample at a great sampling frequency greater than twice the bandwidth this is termed as the nyquist criterion or the nyquist sampling theorem which says that to avoid aliasing one has to sample at fs greater than twice fm all right and therefore what we have seen is something very interesting that the original sample the original uh, the sampled signal can be a distorted version of the original signal and that distortion occurs because these different spectral copies that is the spectrum of the sample signal which comprises of the sum of the uh, spectral copies which are shifted by different multiples of the sampling frequency various shifted by all possible multiples of the all possible integer multiples of the sampling frequency f s all right. And uh, because there can be possible overlap between these spectral copies that results in distortion which is termed as aliasing distortion occurs if f s is less than twice f m therefore to avoid this distortion we need sampling frequency greater than or equal to twice f m this is termed as the this condition all right this result is basically time termed as the Nyquist criteria this criterion or this condition required that is the minimum sampling frequency required to avoid aliasing is termed as a Nyquist criterion and this result is termed as a Nyquist sampling theorem all right. So, we will stop here and look at other aspects in the subsequent modules. Thank you.